Good morning, grade 10. Uh, today we're going to be talking about slope and how you can identify slope, or we've also talked about rate of change and how that's called the rate of change. Um, we're going to look at that in graphs and how to identify y intercepts and x intercepts and <clears throat> things like that. So we're going to jump right in so that this uh, video isn't too, too long. And so grab a piece of paper, please. And if you have graph paper, that's even better. Okay, so let's just set some goals for today. So what we want to accomplish is that <clears throat> you're going to be able to, number one, uh, determine the slope of a line. Um, and for all intents and purposes, um, that can also be called the rate of change. And I told you the other day that basically the difference between a rate and a slope is that a rate can have two different um, types of measurements. So you could have, you know, like a, an example might be kilometers per hour, um, whereas slope would just be like a number over a number, perhaps, or a letter over a letter. Okay, so these are going to be the same kind of increments. These are going to be <clears throat> two different types of uh, of uh, units, I should say. So that's really the only difference, but we're going to be able to do, to identify the slope or the rate of change, we're going to use this formula. So I want you to go ahead and get this down, please. The formula is the change in the y over the change in the x. And, and the other thing is, is that there's different ways of having it written. So sometimes you might see it written like this, m is equal to y2 minus y1. Over, divided by x2 over x1, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but this is um, a different type of uh, formula, but you are essentially finding the exact same thing. Um, some people even simplify it one more step, and they call it just the rise over the run, and, and you'll hear me talking like that sometimes as well. So that's something that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about slope. Okay, You're going to be able to do that. Uh, I also want you to talk about and be able to figure out the um, <clears throat> how to find the y-intercept, um, which is the the place, the coordinates where the graph line crosses the y-axis, okay? And so a, a y-intercept is going to have, um, always going to have a zero in the x spot, and then it's going to have your y value on uh, in the y spot, okay? So then if we're going to also be able to find the x-intercept, and, you know, conversely, if you know that the y-intercept is the co coordinates where the, cro uh, the graph line crosses the y-axis, well then this one is the coordinates <clears throat> where the graph line crosses the x-axis, at the x-axis, excuse me, my mouth isn't working this morning. Okay, so that means that we're going to have every single time in the um, in the y spot is always going to be a zero and this will always be wherever it crosses at the x that's going to be sometimes people don't even put um, for the y intercept they don't put it written as a coordinate like that they'll just go y equals and then they'll put what the value is um, and the same here sometimes they'll go x equals okay so uh, let's get started so we have some different types of slope. Um, we have kind of various various uh, types of slope. So let's just start out with a positive. So you can have a positive slope. 
And if you think about this, it kind of reminds you like of a, of a roof. If you're looking at this line, like if we had our y-axis and we call this a Cartesian plane. <clears throat> if we took um, and drew a positive slope, it would be like you know, a roof, the slope of a roof. So for example, this right here is a positive slope. Okay. It starts low on the left. It goes high on the right. That's a positive slope. Okay. Uh, if you think about it, like if it was <clears throat> the stock market and, you know, maybe you look this up, I don't know if you have any interest in that, but if you were to look that up on your phone and find out what the stock pr prices were, on a good day, if they showed it on a graph, which they often do, then it's going up, you know. But if it was a bad day, or think about it going down a hill or down the other side of a roof, uh, a negative slope would look like, like this. It would start high, and then it would go down low. And I'm showing these all in the first quadrant. Uh, <clears throat> quadrant number one, but they could be anywhere on the Cartesian plane. There are four quadrants, right? One, two, three, and four. So um, then you could have what's known as a zero slope. And, you know, if you think about a zero slope, um, it's like there is no slope. So what does that look like? Well, a zero slope would then look like um, like this. It's just a straight line, you know. If I think about having to go for a walk, this is the kind of thing that uh, is a really easy walk for me to go on. Just because there's no slope, zero slope. Um, and then there's one last one that's actually uh, called an undefined slope. And undefined um, it's virtually impossible, actually, if you, in terms of like, you know, uh, in reality, this would be like straight up and down, like, uh, what's the name of that? L, uh, what was the name of that, mount, that mountain that that guy did the free climbing up and it was like straight up and down, rock face like that. That's an undefined or an impossible slope. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen, right? So this one right here, um, let's go back and just talk about what this looks like in terms of um, numbers. So in this case, uh, with a positive slope, you would have, you know, um, um, values on the top that are going to be, you know, like let's say uh, a positive value on the top. Um, so it's going to go up on the top, and I'm going to just put a, a value of, um, of a Y, and then a positive X. So it's going to increase. It's going to increase on your Y. It's going to increase on your X. Um, it is also possible. I'm going to just use the letter M because that's common in in talking about slope. So it's going to increase on the Y, it's going to increase on the X. If you think about it this way, it could also decrease on the Y and decrease on the X. Um, as long as they were both doing, both going down and both going down, then what you would find is that um, two negatives, when you divide two negatives, they make for a positive. So these two both would, would yield a positive slope. Um, if I think about this negative slope, um, you might have... Um, it going down on the Y but increasing on the X. Um, or it might go increase on the Y but decrease on the X. So those two would both yield uh, a negative slope because when you divide a negative by a positive you end up with a negative, right? But over here when we're talking about the zero slope, um, the zero slope is that it had um, absolutely no change on the y so no change plus nothing on the y 
Um, but it could increase by anything on the X, right? So it can keep moving across this way, but it didn't move up and down at all. So, um, and, and so that's what that one would look like. It's going to have a plus nothing, zero, divided by anything, any number on the bottom. And then if you look at this one over here, it'd be just the opposite. It's going to increase lots on the Y. It goes up and down lots, but it doesn't change at all on the X. Okay? It doesn't change at all on the X. All right, so um, those are your, your four different types of slope. And uh, just uh, would like you to make sure that you kind of get that down as much as you can. Um, all right, and we're just going to pause there for a second. Okay, let's get started on our example number one. So with our first example, I'm going to ask that we're going to be able to determine the um, intercepts, the y-intercept, the x-intercept. Um, also, we'll be able to figure out the domain and range of a graph. And these will all be linear. Okay, so we're going to start with the y-intercept, uh, or the y-axis intercepting the x-axis. And um, does everybody know what this little spot right here is called, where the y-axis and the x-axis intercept? Uh, that's known as the origin, okay? So it actually has the coordinates 0, 0, the origin, the original spot, the beginning, the origin, okay? So, um, and so on this axis over here, we're going to have them coming up by 2, 4, 6, 8, and actually down here, each line is going to be worth 25. So we're going to go 50, 100, 150, 200. And I actually need to come over a little bit further. So 50, 100, 150, 200. And I need to come to here, 300. Okay. All right, so hopefully you have that down. You have a little bit of graph paper. You know, you could print out graph paper on mathbits.com. You can just um, Google graph paper and go to mathbits, and it will give you a printable one for free if you have a printer at home and you want to print some out, because um, I know we go through a lot of it. Um, so it's very important for us when we're drawing graphs. If we have context to make sure that we label what each axis is and so this particular the y-axis is actually the volume in liters okay so the volume in liters so write that down and then down here is going to be uh sorry I'm trying to get her lined up here distance and this is measured in kilometers oh, i got those backwards anyway okay so um, if you think about this, so I'm going to draw this in, in red just so it stands out here. So we've got our first coordinate is going to be right there at the 8, and the last one is going to be at the 200. And then I'm just going to take myself a straight edge. And because I'm here at home, I don't actually have a nice ruler. So I'm just going to use the edge of this um, paper right here, and hopefully this will work. It would be nice if I had a ruler here, but for whatever reason, I didn't grab one when I went, was allowed to go back into school. That didn't work out too badly, actually. Okay, so um, the first question is, write the coordinates of the points where the graph intersects the axis and determine the vertical and horizontal intercepts and describe what the points of the intersections represent. So basically, what is the y-axis, or what is the y-intercept, and what does it mean? What is the y-intercept and what does it mean? Okay, and then 
uh, likely also what is the x x intercept and what does it mean okay so let's start with our y so the y intercept is the place where if you go back to that original uh, note I said the y intercept is the coordinates where the graph line crosses the y axis Okay, and the x will always be 0, and then we put in what the y is. Okay, so that means that the 0 is going to be there. And now I just have to tell you what the... So there's the 0 on the x, and what, where is the y? That line is 8. Uh, so you could also write it like this. y is equal to 8, okay? That's the y-intercept. And what does that mean? Well, it means that at the beginning of this journey for the scooter, because this is a scooter, um, and the, it talked about the gas, and I really should have that written up here on the top, so the volume of gas, another really important detail that I just happened to leave out. A volume of gas in a scooter is the title, because otherwise it really is difficult to understand what we're even looking at. Okay, so that's the title of the of the graph, volume of gas in a scooter. And so what does this mean? It means that at the beginning of the journey, before he's gone anywhere, see, zero distance has been covered, he had eight liters in his tank. So and we have to say, say that. At the beginning of journey, he had eight liters. He had eight liters okay all right what about the x-intercept so the x-intercept is again if we look at this uh, our, our definition here we said that the x-intercept is the coordinates where the graph line crosses the x-axis and notice that we'll have an x value but we will always have a zero for the y we will have an x value but we will always have a zero for the y every time so when I look at this one instead of it having it's going to have a zero right here, but we have to figure out what the x is going to be. Keeping in mind when we're drawing coordinates or writing out coordinates, we always have the x first and then the y. That's the way that goes. So then this is going to be a 200. And what does that mean? It means that when there's no gas left, when you're back down, when your, volu uh, your uh, volume of gas is down to zero, the farthest he can go is 200 kilometers. So that's when he's kind of, when his tank is getting empty. When his tank is empty. He will have gone 200 kilometers. Right? Okay, so those are your your y-intercept and your x-intercept. Literally, where the line crosses, where the graph line crosses the x-axis is known as your x-intercept. Okay, where your your graph line crosses the y-axis is known as your y-intercept. You'll often see me abbreviate it like that. Instead of writing it all the way out like this, I'll just put the first three letters, okay? Okay, now what says, what's the domain and the range of this? What are the domain and the range of this graph? The domain, meaning um, how far can my x values go? So the domain, and we often put it like this, x such that. Okay, and because this is a dot and this is a dot, meaning that that has a beginning point and an ending point, it doesn't continue on. If it had arrows, then it would be done differently. But this does have an ending point and a beginning point. So X can be everything that is um, greater than zero, but it can be zero. So it's gonna be everything that's greater than or equal to zero but it's also going to have to be everything less than um, or equal to 200 okay so this is my my x these are the values of my domain it can be no less than zero which makes sense because if you think about this this is 
the distance, you know, how do you go less than zero distance? You know, in a lot of times in real life, this would be the way that it would work. Um, but notice that I didn't, I didn't list them. It, I didn't put zero, one, two, three, because mm -hmm. distance, you can go half a kilometer. You can go, you know, three quarters uh, of a kilometer. So that's why we used an inequality because we could go partial distances. And so we call this a continuous, continuous data because um, we connected the dots. And so with continuous data, we usually use an inequality. And so then my range, if you want to give the range a try on your own, just pause the video and, and give it a try. It's going to be the same idea as how we just did the domain. Okay, so when we're looking at the range, we're saying, um, what's the very lowest? Well, we start with the lowest and we go up to the highest, right? So the very lowest it can possibly be is a zero, um, and the highest it can be is an eight. Okay, but notice I put the little lines underneath. What does that mean? That means that it can be zero. So it's going to be, y is going to be everything that is greater than or equal to zero, but everything less than or equal to eight. Okay, so that's how we figured out the domain and the range. Okay, so here's an opportunity for you to give a try. Um, so maybe pause this video and have a look at... Um, this question and do uh, it in a similar way to what we just did that first example. Okay, let's move on to example number two. So example number two says that you should be able to sketch a graph of a linear function in function notation. Um, and, um, so I'm going to show you, so it says sketch a graph of the linear function f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Okay, so first of all, Right off the bat, I need you to understand that this right here, this is something that uh, were we to be in the classroom for this last uh, couple of months, we would have gotten to this. But but I'm just going to you're going to have to just trust me that f of x is another way that they write the, uh, the letter y. OK, now that's enough. So anytime that you see f of x uh, for right now, all I want you to do is exchange it for y is equal to. OK, and then write the rest of it in. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit. If you went back to some of your other videos or the notes that I hope you've been taking, um, this is the the um, a one form of an equation uh, of, that is a linear function. And so we talked about this um, already, and, and we've kind of identified the parts. But let's let's copy this down again. So this um, right here is known as my slope that value right so right there the negative two is known as my slope or my rate of change okay and um, the x is my independent variable so you know depending on the situation the x might have a value of of one the x might have a value of negative Four, it might have whatever value. That's what the word variable means. It, it's always changing, okay? And then, and then this uh, seven down here in this particular equation, the seven is no, is known as my y-intercept. Okay, and we just got finished talking about that, so when we're writing this on the graph, that'll help us understand. And then this y is my dependent variable. So this will depend on you know, what I put in here for my x, for my x multiplying it by negative 2, and then I add 7, that's going to tell me what my, my dependent variable of y is equal to, okay? Uh, together, the independent variable and the, and the dependent variable, they make for a coordinate, okay? So my x and my y make for a coordinate on my graph, on my 
one coordinate on my graph. Okay? All right, so with this information, I'm going to start by making myself a, a graph. And you, and you probably know how to do this. Um, if you had this equation, you could just uh, create yourself a table of values. So you've got, you know, your X and your Y. And you could put in there, you know, your negative 2, your negative 1, your 0, your 1, your 2. And then you could solve, okay? So if I put in a negative 2 up here, um, let's just let's try one here. So if we say y is equal to negative 2x plus 7, and I put the negative 2 in for the x. And some of you might be saying, well, how did you come up with a negative 2 one? I just try whatever. I, remember, you can put in whatever you want to for these. But this is the common ones. just makes it easy to do. So negative 2 times negative 2 is a 4 plus 7 means that this is going to be an 11. Okay? Um, and then I could just keep on going, you know. And negative 2 times now a negative 1 plus 7 is going to be 2 plus 7 is 9. And, you know, just keep going like that. So you could always um, take your equation, create a table of values like this, and just keep sliding the different values for x in and then solving for your y. And then now once you have that, now you go, oh, okay, well, I can use my coordinates to, to put them on my graph and then I would be all set. Okay, so that's always one option, but you've already been able to do that. We, we already did this. And so what we, I told you even when we were doing this is that eventually you would get to the place where you don't need to take all this extra work and do all this extra work. You'll be able to go straight from the equation to the graph, and, and that's because you're gonna be able to identify the components of the equation in this way, okay? So what we always do is we start with our uh, y-intercept. Our y-intercept tells us our beginning point of our graph, okay? So you, um, I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to let each one of these be worth, um, let's make each one of these worth 2, just so I have enough room here. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. You know, and I could keep going if I wanted to. Of course, there's no end to these, but I'm just going to go just a little ways here, okay? All right, so the 7 is going to tell me, I'm oh, sorry, my starting place, okay? My y-intercept. So which one's my y-axis? This is my y-axis. This is my x-axis. So this is not an x-intercept, it's a y-intercept. So I'm going to go find the 7 on my y-axis, and that's going to be right here. I'm going to put a dot, okay? That's my beginning point. That's what this guy tells me. My y-intercept tells me that's where I'm going to start. And then from there, I'm going to use my slope, or my rate of change, okay? So my slope is always my formula my slope is the change in the y over the change in the x. That's my slope, okay? So if they only give me a negative 2, that means negative 2 is my change in my y, and it didn't have anything on my x, and that doesn't mean it's a 0, it means it's a 1, because negative 2 divided by 1 is still just negative 2. If I had negative 2 divided by 0, that'd be zero, and so that would be something different. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> I wonder if I could be good enough to edit out a sneeze. Don't think so, guys. Sorry. You're stuck with it. All right, so how do you use the slope? Well, what you're going to do now is you're going to go from that starting point, my y-intercept, and I'm going to count down to because it's changing on my y down 2, so down 2, so that'd be down 6, down 5, okay? And then on my y, on my x, it's going to change by an increase of 1. 
So there's an increase of 1 right there. Okay? And I'm going to repeat that procedure. So it's going to go down 2 over 1. And I'm, not going to, I'm just drawing that in for your benefit. You wouldn't normally draw those little lines in. So you're going to go down 2. So down from 5, down 2, 4, 3, and then over 1. Notice how this is forming a nice straight line. That's because this is linear. Okay, if I all of a sudden have one that ends up over here and it's like I'm gonna make a curve, well that's not linear. Okay, so it's gonna go down two, so we're at three, so down two, one, and then over one. Down two and over one. Nice straight line. I should be able to take my straight edge and connect the dots. And they, every one of these dots should fall right on that line. If it didn't, it wouldn't be linear. Okay? So, just a reminder. You use the y-intercept. Okay? That's your starting place. And then you use the slope to go down 2 and then over 1. Down 2 over 1. Okay? Now, you could also think of it like this. Increase of 2 on the y, but backwards 1. So, and why do I tell you that? Because watch this. I could go like this. Up 2, 1, 2, but backwards 1. And look, that's going to be right on that line too. Up 2, 1, 2, backwards 1. Up 2, 1, 2, backwards 1. These would all fall right on that same line. And why do I point that out? Because that's an important detail. Sometimes when you're graphing something, you might not have quite enough room. And so you're like, well, can I keep going upward and back? Yes, because look, when you have a positive 2 and you divide it by a negative 1, what do you still end up with? A negative 2. So that's two different ways to get the same uh, values on the same point. And, or, and so let's look down here and see the connection between this graph line right here to my coordinates that I figured out the old-fashioned way by using uh, uh, an equation. So when I have this one right here, negative 2 and 11, let's go find the negative 2 and 11 and see if that's a point on this line. Yes, it is. Look at that. There's 1. What about negative 1 and 9? Yep, there's that point. 0, what do we know the 0 is? That's going to be a 7. 0 and 7 and 1 and 5, 2 and 3. We could just keep filling this in. And so what you notice is on your table of values is that this continues to go down by 2, which is, of course, your slope or your rate of change. And so, you know, using this method is definitely longer to, to take every single uh, x value and slide it into the equation and solve. But it would work. And if you ever got stuck and you're like, okay, how do I do this again? You could definitely use this method. There would be nothing wrong with that. But this is the shortcut, okay? So I'm going to ask us to practice the shortcut. So I'm going to put a, an, a question up for you, and I want you to go ahead and, and graph it for me, please. Okay, so here's one for you to try. Don't forget to change the f of x to a y. All right, so it said to sketch a graph of the linear function f of x is equal to 4x minus 3. And since we know that f of x is equal to y, I'm just going to go ahead and take that out and substitute in y is equal to 4x minus 3. Okay? Um, all right, so what do I know from this? From this equation written in this form, which is known as the slope-y-intercept uh, slope form, um, when it takes on this format of y is equal to mx plus b, this is known as the slope y-intercept form, okay? When it takes that form where you have um, the y equal to and you have uh, a number in front of the x and then you have, sometimes you'll have the minus 3, sometimes if it was just a, a, a 0 like the, it was going through the origin then it wouldn't have that, but if it takes this form y is equal to mx plus b then you know that you can use this little shortcut. Okay, so I'm going to start with my um, first quadrant of my Cartesian plane and 
Then I'm going to use my y-intercept to begin. So because it's starting at the negative 3, I'm going to let each one of these be equal to 1. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You'll notice I'm always changing this up. It doesn't have to be exactly uh, the same every time. Okay, so it's going to start at the negative 3. So I'm going to put my first point. Okay, so this is my y-intercept. So I'm going to write him down right here, negative 3. Okay, where he's going through the y-axis is known as my y-intercept. Okay. You'll notice that the, this form is never talking about the x-axis, x-intercept. It's always the y-intercept, okay? So then it says, and then I use my slope, okay? So my slope is going to be change in y over the change in x. So my change in y is a 4. My change in x must be a 1. So it's going to, this is where I said to you as well, some people talk about the rise over the run. So it's going to rise up 4. It's going to run across 1. Okay, running, you go to the right. Okay, if this was a positive, you go to the right. If it's a negative, you go to the left. If it's a positive on the uh, rise, then it's going up 4. If it's a negative on the, then it's going down 4. Okay, so it's we're going to start here at this point. This is always our starting point, our y-intercept. Okay, and then we're going to increase by 4. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Excuse me. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we're going to go across 1, right there. It's going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, okay? Then I'm going to connect the dots. So I'm going to take this and this. I'm going to connect the dots the best I can using this paper, okay? This would continue on. I just stop there. So that is what your graph should look like. Okay. Um, last example says, slide this up a little bit. I can get this lined up, guys. I apologize. As you probably could tell from the last video, it was upside down and backwards, and that's because that's what I see on here, but when I do it on a YouTube video, I can flip it myself, um, but on the Teams, I can't do that. Okay, so this is example number three, matching a graph. Uh, to a given rate of change. And what do we say a rate of change is also called? A slope and a vertical intercept. Okay, so here's our first one. So copy this graph down, please. So you have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And then down here we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And this is actually a, what kind of a graph is this? If this is distance and this is time. So like kilometers per hour, what do we call that? This is called a speed graph. Okay, so in this particular one, they're showing, um, and I'll do this in red, it's starting here, and uh, then here, and then here, and then here. Okay, nice straight line. Okay, connect the dots because this is a speed graph and we, it, all of speed is continuous. Okay, so um, that's the first graph. And then the second graph is this. Uh, 
um, it's also going up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And this is still distance. And this is time. So that makes this also a speed graph, but this one looks like this. So it starts here, but then it goes 4 and 8, and then it goes 8 and 10, and we could continue it on, but we're just going to go like that. Okay? All right. So this is the equation, or excuse me, this is the um, the slope that they gave us. So they're wondering which of these which of these two graphs has the slope of this. So slope of one half and a y-intercept, or sometimes they call it a vertical intercept. They mean the same thing of 6. Okay, which of these two graphs I struggle with going backwards and when I see something upside down. You should ask my children about how to turn the water on from the back side of the island. I'm terrible with that stuff. I'm just, my brain doesn't work that way I guess. Alright, so when I'm looking at this, first of all, they both have a y-intercept of 6. There's that one starting at 6 and that one starting at 6. So they both have that. But which one has a positive slope? Because this slope right here is a positive slope. And so when I look at this one and I look at this one, well, one is going up and one is going down. If you go back to the various types of slope that we had, remember, a positive slope starts low on the left and we always read from left to right we read we read books from left to right we read math from left to right so i'm going to start on the left and i'm going to go to the right so this is low on the left and then it's going up this is called a positive slope this one is starting high on the left and then it's going down this is a negative slope so when i look over here at this one and it's telling me that i'm trying to identify which of these two has a slope that is a one half well that's a positive one half so it definitely can't be this guy because he's starting high and going down. So he's a negative slope. So he's definitely not this one. I don't even have to calculate what the slope is, but it's definitely not this one because he's negative. Okay, so that, that won't work. But this one over here is positive. So before I can say yes for sure this is right, I actually have to calculate the slope. So how is he changing from point to point. That's how I calculate the slope on a graph. Okay, so I'm saying, okay, from he was, let's look at my my formula, the change in the y over the change in the x. Okay, how is he changing? That's what that little sign means. How is he changing on the y? Well, on his y, from this dot to that dot, he was at a six, and this guy's at an eight. So I could, you know, if, if you're if you're finding this confusing, and I understand some people do at the beginning. If you want to, you can write in what is the coordinate to this spot. He's a 0 and a 6. That's the coordinate to that spot. What's the coordinate to this spot right here? He's at a 4 and an 8. Remember, we always put the x value first and then the y. Okay, so how is he changing on my y? He was at a 6, he, then he becomes to an 8. So that's an increase of 2. Okay? And then on my x, he was at a 0, and then he went to a 4. That's an increase of 4. And you might be thinking, well, that's not the same. But yes, it is, isn't it? 2 over 4, positive 2 over 4, would reduce to 1 half. And so this guy does have the same slope, and he does have the y-intercept uh, of 6. So we actually know what that is in terms of... Um, this guy matches the, the, the description that they gave us. Now, just because I, we have just only about three short weeks left or 
four short weeks left before we are finished with the school year. Um, I want to make sure that we, we kind of can get through a little bit more. So I'm just going to throw this on there too. How many of you could then take this information and write it in, uh, write the equation that would match this graph right here? Okay, so let's try that. So the equation is going to take this form. Y is equal to mx plus b. And so all you're going to do is you're going to replace the m and you're going to replace the b with the, that information that you had. And so y is equal to 1 half x plus 6. This is the equation that matches this graph. Okay, who thinks they could write the equation that matches this graph right over here? Pause it for a second and figure it out. We didn't actually take the time to figure out what this slope would be, so let's do that first before we can write the equation. So he's going from, this was at a 0 and 6, and this guy was at a 4 and 4. Okay, so how is he changing on my y? He's going down 2. And on my x, he's going up 4. So that would be a negative 1 half if I reduce. And I, of course, in, in um, oh, sorry, I've got to slide that over. Um, of course, that would be a um, convention of math is that we always write things in simplified form. So if, he's comes, if he starts out, if we figure it out, that's it going down 2 from a 6 to a 4 is going down 2, but then from a 0 to a 4 is increasing. And why did I pick it that way? Remember, I'm going from left to right. I always go from left to right. So that's my slope, and he had the same y-intercept. What did you come up with for, for an equation? He should be the, almost the same as the other one, except for he's got a negative sign in front of my, in front of my slope. Okay, so uh, there you have that one. Grade 10, today was a long lesson, I know, but it was a very important lesson. And, you know, you can watch them more than once if you need to, to get a real good understanding or pause them and go back and, and re-listen to something that I said and watch an example. You also know that you have uh, the option of putting stuff on the team um, chat if you need questions or have anything like, oh, Mrs. Lawrence, the whole video is done upside down. You know, that's important information that you can put on there. I appreciate that. Um, and for the rest of you who didn't have a chance to watch that other one, I did add the, um, the answer key so that if you wanted to listen and then have the answer key printed off in front of you, then you could do that too. And so all of the words that I would be saying would still make sense, but then you'd have it um, right side up. Um, okay, so uh, I really hope that you take the time um, to go over the practice that I'm going to attach that goes with this as well because it is so important and this is a really uh, pivotal part of Foundations 11 is being able to do linear equations and then moving right into quadratics. And so um, I really hope you'll take the time and do that. And uh, if you want to uh, check back next week, we'll go over... Um, some of the work and and uh, if you have any questions feel feel free to ask